the movie was like two hours and 21 minutes long, way too long for a feature. And uh, we would sit together, and I would say, you know, I thought <coughs> this stuff with Bill was good, but let's see what the other material is. We look, and we would then maybe pick a different close-up. And part of the pr uh, process is the fact that once we have the picture together, and I was semi-satisfied -sat with it, which was two weeks later, which is very, very fast, we decided we were going to preview the picture because we had no idea what we had. Seriously, we thought it was funny, we thought it was interesting, but what would an audience think of the picture? We didn't know. So we decided at the studio, which is across the way in Burbank, Burbank Studios, which is Warner Brothers, uh, to have us, we have a screening room just like the one you're sitting in, and we had the studio invite an audience. And how you invite an audience is you go to a movie theater and say, you, someone stands out in front and says, would you like to see this uh, movie at the studio kind of thing? And they say yes or, or no, and we give them an invitation to come to see the movie. So we had no idea who was coming to the movie other than people who go to movies, because that's what we wanted, kind of. And we started to run the picture, and people were laughing in the right places, and quiet and scared in other places. And interestingly enough, Richard Edlin, who did the, the, the uh, special effects on the picture, and visual effects. John Bruno, visual effects. John Bruno was, the, uh, was our art director, and he was responsible for a lot of the look and, and, and putting the scenes together and actually boarding the show, <coughs> boarding and blocking the show to some degree at the beginning. So working with these two people, trying to figure out what's, what the effects were, which was, was done prior to shooting, because there's a, what, what's called a storyboard. It's like reading a comic book. It's, uh, uh, they draw pictures. Well, each scene has got a, has got a each, each, each shot is, a, is depicted in the storyboard. And uh, by putting the storyboards together in an artful way, we uh, would block, this, block the effect sequences out. And uh, then we would start working. And, and I mean, the visual effects on Ghostbusters, I think we had about 200 or so people working on it. And uh, we were also doing 2010 at the same time. Um, the, the, two, the two theaters, the two movies were, uh, one was from MGM and one was from Columbia, and, and uh, they were spread about six months apart at the box office, so they weren't going to compete. And uh, so the studios were able to split the cost of completely rebuilding the studio, which I had taken over from Doug Trumbull. And uh, his style of doing shots and, and, and effects was quite a bit different than ours. And so we've had to basically rebuild the, rebuild the facility as well as design the shots and execute them. Our shots had to be funny. Yeah. <laughs> we had to, I mean, these guys figured out how to, I figured out, we didn't want to have lasers coming out of these, these proto pack, proton packs. So I thought, let's try rubberizing light. And so we came up where the, you know, John and Terry Wendell and some of the other animator, animators came up with the, the kind of chaotic uh, emanations from the, from the proton packs. Um, and I must tell you that the first time we previewed the movie, which was two weeks after we shot, we had no effects. Well, no finished effects. I, we, we had nothing. When the boys shot, the proton packs, guns, nothing came out. All we had is we made some kind of sound, so we right. knew. And for the audience that saw it, the director got up in front of the audience before the movie and said, look, this is very early on in the process. We'd like to see what we have in the movie, and that's why you're invited here. And uh, where you hear sound but see nothing happening, kind of think, don't worry, we're working on it. There will be something there. And uh, one of the things I'd like to show you uh, is uh, if you remember the scene where Sigourney Weaver 
brings her groceries home and she, you remember, and she opens the refrigerator. Well, I gotta tell you that we had nothing. When she opened the refrigerator, everybody in the audience screamed, okay? I wanna show you what they saw, okay? So brace yourself. <laughs> Also, this early on, there's no music. And, uh, Are you troubled by strange noises in the middle of the night? Do you experience feelings of dread in your basement or attic? Have you or any of your family ever seen a spook, specter, or ghost? If the answer is yes, then don't wait another minute. Pick up your phone and call the professionals. Go Ghostbusters. Our courteous and efficient staff is on call 24 hours a day to serve all your supernatural elimination needs. We're ready to believe you. Watch when she takes the uh, marshmallows out of the pack. It's the first time we show the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. yourself. That's what they saw. And they screamed. <laughs> By that time, we knew we were in. We knew we had something good. That's all, but we had no idea how good that kind of thing. Uh, from that point, these guys had to get everything going, and it takes months to do special effects. Special effects movie, a regular movie normally takes from the beginning of shooting to the time it gets into the theater, nine months to a year. Normal special effects movie might take two years before it gets into the theater. In those days, I mean, Star Wars was two years and Empires was two years. Raiders is about one. These are movies I did the effects with at, at ILM. <clears throat> but Ghostbusters, the lawyers were like, were, were so assiduous that they were wasting a lot of time. And so, I mean, by the time they're, they're, they're negotiating force majeure and all these ridiculous aspects of the contract, I mean, meanwhile, important days are going by that we need that we need to do the shots, and uh, actually, when when we we were doing the shots, we <clears throat> we had so little time left to do them that the uh, the optical composites, which are very complicated, with re they require all kinds of film elements and and putting various pieces like the the, the foreground, the act, the actors, the 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 skies, the animation, all of these things had to be done like superimposing kind of in, in composite work. And we, uh, we, did, we didn't have time for more than one take. In other words, each shot took several hours to composite. And so basically it had to be right. And Mark Vargo, who was our uh, optical composite chief, was, was, a, was a genius and, and would go through and, and wedge, photographically wedge all the shots together and so that they all matched and they, they would cut with the preceding shots. And, uh, and, so, and, and so when we had, I think we got maybe five or six weeks left and Ivan decided he wanted to add another hundred shots. And, I, and, I, and, I, and so he came out and, I, and uh, 
came out to talk this over, and I met him in the parking lot with a samurai sword. <laughs> I said, we have to do a samurai cut, yeah, you know. And, and so I talked him, I think I think talked him down to a little over 50 shots. We still had to add, but there were blood in, there was blood in the shoes in the optical department, I mean. These guys worked physically 24 hours a day yeah, it was in good. order to do this picture in the time limit that we had. It was just totally insane. And they had to be right the first time. There was no fooling around kind of thing. And somehow or another we made it. And what I learned as a film editor from this gentleman here is an expression he uses, which is less is more. Meaning that when you are thinking about, and, and I think visually when I'm cutting, uh, putting a special effects shot in, make it short. Don't make it long, because every frame takes days for them to uh, get it done, kind of thing. So less is more in order to make the, the right. schedule. And you, don't, you don't want to overexpose the, the uh, audience to, to any of the shots, because they get bored very quickly. Well, nowadays, even quicker. And part of the, and this, remember, this is the era, pre-digital era. Uh, we had just come off of Poltergeist, and Richard started the studio, uh, Boss Film, from, took it over from Doug Trumbull. Uh, and what we had to do is, is figure out, well, how are we going to do, you know, you got a creature that's 120 feet tall, you got all these other, other ghosts, they can't be animated. That was the, the only technique then was animated or stop motion. And it's like, well, it can just have to be guys in suits. Right. So we have and it's like, well, that worked. I know Ivan was not happy. I mean, when he saw the first test of the, of the Marshmallow Man, because it was just a rubber suit, a, a, a foam rubber, shot against, shot with, in the angle we would shoot it against the rafters of the studio, and he goes, that's going to be the end of the movie? And I went, no, no, it's, it's going to look cool. By the way, Marshmallow Man, put that in here. <laughs> and what I want to do is, since you're mentioning the Marshmallow Man, I'd like to show this audience a piece of that scene that we ran for the first audience. Again, remember, we had nothing. However, a day or two before we ran the uh, a movie for this audience, uh, these gentlemen sent me a test to show Ivan of this man in his suit walking down uh, New York Street and with the Central boys, Park West. Central, Park West. Central Park West, with the boys on the right hand side. And what it is, you'll see a black and white shot in the sequence. It's the only shot of the Marshmallow Man, okay? And uh, in the other spots earlier, all it is is my usual white film, you know, kind, kind of thing. And the audience had no idea what was coming. They, you know, Mar Marshmallow, what the hell does that mean, you know, kind of thing. And <laughs> luckily I had that one shot that I was told, don't use it. This is a test. Don't ever tell me not to use something. You give it to me, I use it. That's all. Uh, hold on a second. Let's see if I can operate this. Are you told by? No, 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 no. <laughs>